Hello everyone, Morgan from Murray Edge Networks here. We are at the end of day one of this home cinema build. Just going to give a quick background uh, introduction into what we're doing and how we're doing it. So if we start with the front of the room, we have painted part of the room black. Uh, this is going to be behind a screen wall that we're building. So we're going to build out some timber framing with some acoustic panels that are wrapped. Uh, and those will be surrounding an 85 inch Samsung TV that we have more or less center of this wall. Then as we work our way through the room, we have this window to deal with that we're gonna be closing up with some acoustic treatment so we don't leak any audio out of the room and we don't have anything affecting us from outside. Uh, beyond that, we've marked up all of our construction lines where our timber substructure is gonna go for our walls and our columns. Um, and that's what all this timber that we've laid out here is so that we're ready for installation tomorrow. Uh, we have a few of these columns working our way through the room uh, and at the back of the room we are going to be painting this bookshelf black as a bit of a feature piece where our client will have some curated uh, artwork, some books and a few items that have been picked out by the interior designer. So that's a bit of a walkthrough so you can see the construction of the room, uh, what we've been able to achieve today in terms of marking up all of our construction lines, preparing all of our timber so that tomorrow we can get stuck in with the build. As with any home cinema room, there's always compromises that we need to make with regards to the design, location of the speakers, and existing construction of the room. Um, unfortunately, this window is located where our projection screen wall needs to finish up, as well as where we want to have some acoustic panels installed. So what we're going to do is we've installed some weather sealing on the actual window itself, this black foam tape, so that the window doesn't rattle, and we're going to install this uh, window fill, which is a uh, you know, shutter ply board which has battens both front and back to make it rigid and secure. We're going to install that into this window with a curtain draped on the outer side so that it looks like the window is permanently closed or the curtain is permanently closed uh, and then we'll install the acoustic panels on the front side of this so that when you're in the room you would never know that there was actually a window there when somebody's coming into the property they're not going to know that this is actually the cinema room and they'll be surprised when they actually walk in here and see that the window is completely closed up. So this is a challenge that we've had to deal with in this room, but I think that our solution with regards to where it meets up with the projection screen wall is the best compromise that we could make. We're always trying to think about the design elements inside the room as well as outside the room. So what we've chosen to do is wrap this window fill in a curtain so that when somebody walks in from the outside they just see a curtain and it looks like it's closed. So we're just going to staple this curtain down to the board before we install the board up into the window.
We have now finished the construction of our TV screen wall. Uh, this is a fairly strong timber construction that we've glued and screwed together and mounted to both the floor and the ceiling so that it's nice and rigid. What will happen from here is we're going to wrap, we're going to paint all of this timber framing black and wrap some of it with fabric. And onto that we'll mount Velcro so we can adhere our screen panels onto this framing. Then in the center section we're going to mount a board to the back of this which will ultimately give us the right spacing for our 85 inch TV to be mounted inside here with a nice alcove surround so that it looks like the TV is floating within this framing. This is the basis of our acoustic columns, which are going to house our speakers. They will also be the basis of our footlights, and on the back side of them will be our LED strip light. These columns will extend from the floor all the way up the wall and across the ceiling, linking the entire room together, and it goes progressively back through the room, where we have three of these columns from floor to ceiling, and one going straight across the ceiling. Now that we have the columns running across the ceiling, you'll notice that we've located speaker boxes for Atmos in four different locations. This means that our client can go from a 5.1.2 system all the way up to a 9.1.6, ensuring that the speakers are placed in the optimal locations across the ceiling. A little bit of extra planning in the design stage allowed us to be able to put these speaker boxes in so that we can always add additional Atmos speakers and locate them in the correct places later.
these are the columns that we've built that will house our speakers and our LED lighting. What we've done is we've marked out where the in-wall speakers will go so that we can cut them out and then wrap these panels in fabric and that will allow us to hide the speakers away completely so that when our client comes into the room, all of the speakers are hidden, nothing is visible. A very nice clean look for the cinema. This is a bit of a closer look at the front screen wall framing. Essentially we will have our framing panels that hide all the speakers mounted up on some Velcro on this front section. So that allows us to place the speakers in the perfect location on the back wall and you won't see where they're actually located. So this is the, the support that will hold speakers, it'll hold the TV and then everything will get hidden by the panels that will get installed later. Onto the back of this framing we're going to mount a timber board which will be wrapped in the same screen fabric as the rest of the front wall and our TV will be mounted onto that. That will give us the illusion that the TV is floating in front of the backing panel and with some luck and good measurements the front of the TV screen will actually be finished up flush with the front of the acoustic panels that we're going to be mounting either side of the screen wall. So onto this solid framing we've made sure that everything is strong enough to house the TV, speakers and any acoustic treatment that we require behind the screen. On this section of the front wall we're going to have some mineral fiber acoustic insulation installed in behind the fabric panels. Um, even though this is not particularly going to be visible, we've painted it black just so that if there is any panels that for some reason don't line up, you don't see any of the treatment behind the, the fabric. You know, nice clean look even behind you know, the work that we're going to be doing, trying to make everything as trimmed off as possible. Hi everybody, so at this stage in the build we're ready to get all of our electrics in. So far we've wired the 220 volt uh, incoming supply for all of our lighting. This is 220 volts out down to our LED drivers. The light switch will be positioned here as you come into the room, which is a control 4 uh, panel. Then we've got our electrical feed which is going to all of our dimmable down lighters. And then these white and black cables over here are the LED strip lighting uh, power supplies, which are also, they're going to be dimmed to various levels, working away from brightest to dimmest towards the room to give a nice, a nice feel. Moving on to the front of the cinema room, we've got our speaker cables roughed in and we've got some Cat5 and Cat6 network cables. We have a philosophy that if the device doesn't move, it gets hardwired into the network. Uh, it's always better than to be on Wi-Fi, keeps Wi-Fi, keep Wi-Fi separated for 
mobile devices. We also have a Ethernet cable for uh, IR control. We're doing a control for system and this TV does have IP control, but just in case, we always like to have a redundant system available uh, using network cable to the back of the room to do IR control. We also have our HD Anywhere optical uh, HDMI cable rated to 48 gigabits. This will ensure that we can get full 4K video at any frame rate uh, that the client is going to be watching. Any build is only as good as the documentation that goes with it. And we, we use the brother P-Touch label maker. We print out labels for every cable uh, and most of the devices so that they're easily identified during the installation as well as post, post uh, completion where we, if we come to do any service work, we can easily identify what cable is what and we don't have to waste time. And it looks a lot nicer than the sort of traditional masking tape labels that we come across all too often. These are our frames for our acoustic panels that are on the front left and right of the cinema room. They are black, uh, painted black so that we can stretch the black acoustic fabric over them and in case there's any light that's shining onto the panels you don't see the pine timber through any of the uh, acoustic fabric. So we've pre-cut them, painted them and they're ready for the fabric to be pulled over them. So we'll get started with that. Uh, a little bit later on today. This is the entrance to the cinema and because our supply feed for the lighting in the room was on the left side of the room, we found it easiest to locate all of our switches, dimmers and control equipment for the lighting on this part of the room. So what we have is a control for dimmable keypad that will have preset scenes and that will trigger 
two additional switches that will control our LED strip lights and our footlights throughout the room. The dimmable portion of the control for keypad will be for the down lights that are overhead in the room. In this room, to start off with what we've done is we've got four set dimmed LED strips that progressively get brighter into the room. We've got the footlights, which will be activated should the client press pause on the movie or switch the room on so that he can walk in and see where everything is. And then obviously the dimmed down lights, which are just 12 overhead lights at the same dimmed ratio. Uh, we have discussed with the client that a future upgrade would be adding additional dimmers so we can have stepped lighting from the front of the room to the back of the room. But what we've done, as you can see, uh, as mentioned, have all of our cabling here in a very neat way that is organized so that we can easily identify what's going on. As mentioned, we have brought all of our feeds for our down lights back to the electrical, essentially DB location and we've labeled them so that in future we can separate them out and add additional dimmers in for the individual sets of lights. So as mentioned, we have four sets of LED strip lights running across from one side of the room to the other side of the room. Uh, those are these sets of lights over here and we'll manually adjust the dimmed brightness to each of them. Once they're set, this will get covered up and if the client would like to make any changes at a later stage, we can obviously increase and decrease the brightness manually. So if our client would like to add additional features and functionality to the lighting, these manual dimmers will be replaced by control four dimmers and the power supplies will be upgrade, upgraded to TRIAC power supplies, which take care of the power supply to the LED strips, converting them from 220 down to 12 volts for the actual LED. As with the down lights, the returns for the LED strips are all labeled and brought back to the power suppliers. What we have done in the cinema room is fastened all of our cables to the timber structure as much as possible. Wherever relevant, we have separated the cables out so that there's no interference between them. And this is to make sure that we can obviously identify the cables very easily, but we're also able to uh, ensure that there's no rattling because once there's a bit of base taking place the cables may rattle against the structure by fastening them down with cable pins we eliminate that risk. As our electrical supply is on the right hand side of the cinema room we have chosen to make all of our runs for our electrical cabling down the right hand side of the room so everything runs across the uh, helmets into the ceiling structures and into the columns down to the footlights. And what we've done is made sure that all of our signal cable, speaker cable, RCA cables for our subwoofers, HDMI cables run from the AV cabinet at the back of the room across to the left-hand side and through all the way to their respective locations. By doing this, we've completely separated any electrical and low voltage services so that there's as little interference possible. When we started this project, this bookshelf cabinet at the back of the room was completely white. Uh, through discussions with the interior designer, we decided to have it painted black. And the cabinet at the back over here will accommodate our Anthem AVR, as well as the Apple TV, the local DSTV set-top boxes, and any additional source hardware that our client would like to add to the cinema. On the uh, right-hand side of the cabinet will be the router for the entire house, as well as the CCTV and VR. By having it here, we're able to put the picture of the CCTV cameras up onto the cinema screen so that if the client does want to check the cameras at any point in time, day or night, and he's in the room, it's one touch press to bring the cameras up onto the screen. To add to the acoustic properties of the cinema room, we have decided to go with a eight millimeter carpet underlay underfelt and a 12 millimeter carpet, which is going to stretch wall to wall, front to back, so that the uh, cinema room has a nice warm carpet in the room.
All of our wall structures have been fabric wrapped, installed, LED lights strips have been uh, installed and our down lights have been installed. Behind some of these wall constructions are our speakers for our surrounds, our backs, etc. By doing this, we've been able to hide all of the speakers and that allows us the best flexibility for changing the configuration around, whether it be a simple 5.1 system or all the way up to a 9.1.8 speaker configuration. Our client is quite excited about this as he appreciates the idea of the hidden speakers and the clean cinema aesthetic. So we've now installed all of this hardware and made sure that everything is working correctly and that there's no interference from this acoustically transparent fabric on our actually, uh, actual measured speaker output. At the back of the room, we've built a 150 mil base trap, which is suspended from the ceiling and set away from the back wall of the room. This is filled with 40 mils of mineral fiber insulation, fabric wrapped on both the front and the back, so that we can smooth out a bit of the base response within this room as we noticed there was a particular bump in the low frequency response. Now that the room has been completely built out, we are ready to calibrate. We've been using Anthem AVRs and processes for several years because we feel like their audio calibration and their power output of their processes and amplifiers is very good. So we have now set up the microphone in the primary listening position. Arc Genesis asks for between five and nine measurement positions, depending on how many people are going to be watching in the cinema room. So we're going to go with a broader measurement of about seven positions. And the microphone connects to the laptop and measures the room. And then all the calculating power of the, Mac, of the laptop uh, processes the measurements to enable that we get the best sound for the multiple different seating positions within the room. And that's a wrap. We've completed this amazing Dolby Atmos Home Cinema build one month from when our client appointed us, 350 man hours of time on site, a beautiful project that we are very proud of. And if you'd like to get a home cinema built like this, feel free to get in contact.